President of Kazakhstan, Kasim Jomart Tokayev, held a meeting with South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who arrived in Kazakhstan for a state visit. The parties discussed prospects of mutually beneficial cooperation in politics, economy, trade, investments, as well as cultural humanitarian areas. Following the meeting, a number of agreements and memorandums were signed. During the years of independence, the countries achieved a high level of partnership in almost all areas. Last year, the trade turnover between Kazakhstan and South Korea reached a record high level of 4 billion US dollars. Today, we can state with great confidence that the relations between Kazakhstan and South Korea have reached a high level. First, we managed to form an effective model of cooperation based on the partnership and respect for mutual interests. We established close collaboration on all levels and we addressed all urgent issues through business approach and constructive dialogue. Kazakhstan's first president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, played a special role in the introduction of the bilateral cooperation development. Kazakhstan is one of the most actively developing countries in Central Asia. We hope that Kazakhstan will be a good partner because your country pays particular attention to the fourth industrial revolution and developed a development strategy until 2015. Our bilateral trade is increasing, investments are developing and infrastructural cooperation is growing. The next sectors for our cooperation include information technologies, innovations in the industrial sector, healthcare and space developments. Kazakhstan will build two logistics centers in Iran. The new centers will be used to export goods from Kazakhstan to Persian Gulf countries, with Iran serving as a transit country. Iran will provide land areas in the ports of Bandar Abbas and Amirabad for the construction of the centers. The announcement was made at a meeting in Tehran between Kazakh and Iran diplomats. The parties also discussed the aspects of cooperation within international organizations and exchange opinions on the regional and global security matters. The cooperation with Kazakhstan in trade and logistics can be very beneficial for Iran. The meeting, which was attended by the ministry officials of both countries, was very useful. The parties discuss the cooperation in Caspian region, which is a very important topic. Iran and Kazakhstan are both Caspian littoral states, so we need to address the challenges and discuss joint efforts concerning the region together. Officials of the two countries emphasize the importance of enhancing the operations of Kazakhstan-Turkmenistan-Iran railway route, which opens access to the Persian Gulf. The countries should cooperate among themselves in the international trade. Iran and Kazakhstan can be very useful to each other. If we combine our efforts, both countries will definitely benefit. At the meeting, the officials also discussed the agenda of the 16th meeting of the Kazakh-Iranian Intergovernmental Commission for Trade, Economic, Scientific, Technical and Cultural Cooperation, which will be held in the Kazakh capital. Kazakhstan and Belarus has agreed to continue the policy of mutually beneficial cooperation. The countries have achieved a high level of interaction in politics, economy, science and culture. As part of the roadmap strategy, the countries are working together to develop the space and information technologies industries. For example, future innovative projects are being developed in the high-tech park in Minsk. The countries are also discussing the future creation of an assembly production of Belarusian advanced X-ray equipment in Kazakhstan. First of all, this applies to all the economic sectors that have a well-established research background in Kazakhstan and Belarus. We are interested in new Belarusian technologies, such as drones and information technologies. Many sectors of the Belarusian economy have good groundwork, projects and developments, which could also work for Kazakhstan's economy. The successful implementation of the innovative agricultural project serves as an evidence of the effective cooperation. Belarusian scientists contributed to the opening of the first smart greenhouse complex in Kazakhstan's capital. The use of the Belarusian technologies has led to high yields of tomatoes. 
технологии мы крайне заинтересованы. Since their high technologies, we're very interested to work in the science, technologies and education sectors. We need to create network structures which allow us to work and support each other. There are many areas that include technologies and medicine. Belarus and Kazakhstan have a good level of medical industry. The successful cooperation is also conducted in the military sector. Joint projects are being implemented for the restoration and modernization of aviation spare parts. A joint production of drones will be established in Kazakhstan. Agropark Taldi Korgan, a regional research center, has started operations in Almaty region. The combination of science and production used in the facility will help demonstrate the latest agricultural development on a single platform in the country. The center will focus on the research of priority crops for the region, such as sugar beet, corn and soybeans. We will explain and show the ways to prepare the seeds for sowing and the ways to protect them from their contraindications. We will plant 14 varieties of seeds and harvest the yields in autumn. We will also provide consultation services to agronomists at the research centre. According to specialists, the digital technologies used in the agropark helps to carry out the sowing process with high degree of precision, although excluding the possibility of human errors. The specialist has set a certain command on the computer to plant the seeds at required depth in the ground. Specialists have said that the crop processing will also be performed using the same technique. The new crop sowing method is expected to increase the yield by 2.5 times. Our goal is to bring positive improvements in the economy given that any production should ultimately be profitable in the long run. Farmers are interested in science only when it can be used to help them to increase their profitability. Therefore, we have to address many development objectives in the center by trying to combine all the developments. The center is the second technological agricultural park in the Almaty region. The first park is successfully operating in Karasai district. Regional authorities plan to allocate more than 100 million tenge to support the second project. Munich hosted a Kyrgyz German business forum. The event concluded with more than 10 agreements signed between the governments and enterprises of the two countries. A number of contracts and memorandums between businessmen were also signed. The total amount of the contracts is estimated at 1 billion euros. The countries plan to cooperate in trade and economy, hydropower, infrastructure, agriculture and tourism industries. Tajikistan's foreign trade turnover in the first quarter of this year was recorded at nearly 964 million US dollars. The figure is 3% higher compared to the same period last year. Tajikistan mostly exports mineral products, aluminium, as well as textile materials. Kazakhstan remains one of the main trading partners of the country. The volume of the bilateral trade between the two countries amounted to 203 million US dollars. Uzbekistan is actively developing its tourism industry. In 2017, nearly 3 million tourists visited the country, but last year the number was 5 million. In the first quarter of this year, 1 million foreigners visited Uzbekistan. The country's export of tourist services has also increased. The value amounted to over 246 million US dollars. According to the Uzbek government, tourism sector contributes to the integrated development of the regions and infrastructures while also improving the country's image and foreign investments. The Hermitage, one of the largest museums in the world, is planning an archaeological expedition to Turkmenistan. Ancient monuments in the country will be jointly studied by experts from the Institute for History of Material Culture of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The works are planned for 2019-2020. The archaeological expeditions of the Hermitage are currently conducting their research in Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. To mark the year of Kazakhstan in Uzbekistan, Uzbek drama theatre from the Kazakh city of Shimkent presented a production in Tashkent based on a work by Kazakh writer Sabit Dosanov, When a Wolf Howls. <laughs>
Sabit Dosanos' novel is based on actual events. Various critics believe that this is the reason why the work is valuable. The plot revolves around a married couple and their children. According to actor Javlon Sayitov, it took him significant efforts to connect with his character. There's a great responsibility for me. I was worried if I can fully present the image of my character because Sabit Dosanov, his father and relatives attended the premiere of the play. I did my best to show the qualities of my character as well as his philosophy and aspirations. I tried to demonstrate the image which the writer described in the book. The spectators will judge whether I succeeded or not. <laughs> Sabit Dosanov's work was translated into the Uzbek language and adapted for the theatre production by writer and journalist Mehmon Islamkulov. The play was directed by Uzbekistan's famous cultural figure Saifuddin Meliev. The novel is particularly interesting because it focuses on contradictions in society and covers a wide range of various challenges. The drama involves styles such as lyric, poetry, prose and fantasy. The production sparked interest in the audience. This is a very educational performance. It shows what mercy is and motherly feelings, as well as teaches to love the loved ones. The performance conveys topics of medicine and parenting. This is a very essential and touching performance. The play shows mistakes and shortcomings that people make and have. People need to help each other in order to cope with their weaknesses and they should make sure that they won't repeat their mistakes. This is one of the performances which might make our society kinder. As part of the Year of Kazakhstan in Uzbekistan, more than 200 various political and cultural events are planned in the hosting country. Theatre tours have triggered a series of festive events. For centuries, our countries have been connected by friendship and cooperation. Hopefully, year by year, our ties will grow stronger. We will continue to develop cooperation in culture, economy, education and other areas. The theatre staff will tour to another four regions in Uzbekistan with a performance based on the work of the Kazakh author. The theatre's final showcase will take place in the Samarkand city. The Trails of Nomads research expedition paid another visit to Georgia. The expedition members had a meeting with Georgian President Salome Zurabishvili, attended by prominent historians and scientists. The parties emphasized that Kazakhstan and Georgia have common historical past. The meeting participants discussed the ways to develop cooperation and they also discussed about the Great Battle of Didgori, which is a significant historical event for Georgia. The parties decided to establish a joint memorial facility at the battlefield. The Trails of Nomads expedition leader Sapar Iskakov talked about the importance to ensure safety of the ancient Kipchak artifacts and their protection at the governmental level. At the meeting, the Kazakh delegation presented to the Georgian president Salome Zurabishvili a 12th century replica of Kipchak Kobis. <laughs> We know some information about the Kipchaks in Georgia. However, we don't know much about the history and culture of the Kipchak people outside Georgia and in other parts of the world. In order to fill in this gap, I propose to create a series of joint Georgian-Kazakh television programs. According to the Georgian media managers, the series of programs will allow to promote the history of the Georgian Kipchaks in the world. If the initiative finds support in Kazakhstan, the Georgian party is set to cover half of the expenses. Based on the available data, 40,000 Kipchak families moved to Georgia in the early 12th century. However, there are still many unknown information in the Kazakh-Georgian history. It is proved by written sources that the majority of Kipchaks integrated into the Georgian society and converted into Christianity, which was important to fight the enemies and improve the domestic affairs. During the rule of Queen Tamar, the Kipchaks were holding high positions. For instance, Kubasar, a former Kipchak. Yes. Kubasar. 
Kutlu Arslan is another proof of the Kipchaks being in power in Georgia. He is mentioned in the poem The Night in the Panther's Skin by Georgian writer Shota Rustaveli. <laughs> The poem was translated into all languages and we are proud of it. Many people could have been the prototypes of the poem's main character. For instance, Kudlu Arslan was Queen Tamar's finance minister and the poem was written during her rule. The Georgians know that he was not an ethnic Georgian. Based on our guess, he was a Kipchak. <laughs> The Trails of Nomads expedition is set to move south to the city of Akhal Sihe. The city was the capital of the Turkish Kipchak state, Atabyek, in the 13th to 16th centuries. Kazakhstan marks the 120th birth anniversary of geologist Kanish Satpaev. The founder of the National Academy of Sciences has made a great contribution to the development of geology and culture in Kazakhstan. Experts say that his researches are still relevant. In an evening in the Kazakh capital dedicated to the memory of the outstanding scientists, well-known historians and geologists discuss the discoveries made by Kanish Satpaev as well as the unknown aspects of his life. We grew up surrounded by people who knew Kanish, who honoured and accompanied this man. We've heard a lot about him. In schools, when we say a person will become a scientist, we meant that he or she will be a scientist like Satpaev. My father wanted us to devote our lives to science. He wanted us to become famous scientists and follow Satpaev's path. Kanish Satpaev did not limit himself with only geology and mineralogy. When he was a chief of department in the academy during the war, he worked with scientists from the West, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and the Caucasus. They all united thanks to him. By studying the deposits in detail, Kanish Satpaev is proven to be an important figure to the history. There was also a special book exhibition and a video presentation about the life and career of the prominent Kazakh geologist Kanish Satpaev during the anniversary event. Academician of Music Saida Kalikova gave a solo concert dedicated to the 20th anniversary of her creative profession. The famous Kazakh pianist presented an evening of piano music to the Metropolitan Music fans. Saida performed pieces of her favourite composers such as Beethoven, Chopin and Debussy. And she also performed her own works. Today, the repertoire of Saida Kalikova includes more than 100 classical works and 20 of her own compositions, which the pianist dedicates to everything that is dear to her heart, including her relatives, her native city Uralsk and the time spent studying in Florence. I want to give several concerts for the celebration of the 20th anniversary of my creative activity. Besides the solo concert that I performed today, I also want to perform with an orchestra. My friend, a professor at the Conservatorio Luigi Cherubini, where I studied in Florence, will participate. He is a conductor and a viola player. The concert will feature works from the 20th and 21st centuries that were rarely performed. It will be interesting. One of the important people in Saida's life is her mother, Lubov Kinjigareyeva. The repertoire of the pianist includes many works dedicated to her mother. Saida's mother said her daughter had shown great interest in music since childhood. The musical figure grew up in a home that fully encourages her to express her creativity. <laughs> At home, we loved to listen to opera. We had many records of famous performers and bands. We had a lot of books about music. Since childhood, Saida has a deep and huge interest in music. So, music, I always 
Беге, музыкаға. Жан жақты болды. In autumn, Saida Kalikova will perform at a big solo concert in the capital. The concerts will also be organized in Almaty and Pavlodar. The pianist will also perform in her native city, Uralsk, in order to complete the celebration of the 20th anniversary of her creative activity.